Hey, what's up guys? Chris down here at the shop and I've been trying to improve upon my blacksmithing skills uh, lately and I've come across a little issue with my forge setup. Uh, let me get you set up right here. So the forge setup's been working pretty good so far, but as you can see, as I, let me bring you over here. You can see a little bit better. So that's what I got. Uh, in order to prove upon my fuel efficiency, I got my fire brick set up on one side to keep you know, one end closed and keep the temperature higher in the chamber. And as you can see, my setup here for that is just an end table, a wooden end table. And I got the fire brick stacked up on it. It's not really ideal, but it works temporarily. And we're gonna try to set something up more uh, permanently for that. And as you can see down here, I've been losing some bricks, you know. You bump it from the other side by accident and they fall and they break. So that's not really good. Two dollars a piece, we're losing bricks there fast. So what we're gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna try to set up something more permanent uh, for the stand. What I got here is some half inch rebar uh, that I picked up off the job site and I'm going to attempt to try to rig up a mounting system on the forge stand and sort of like a little L bracket but we'll try to put some fancy twist in there and maybe some bends, some scrolls. Uh, if everything goes as planned, that's what we're going to try to attempt today. So we'll get the forge fired up and stick with me and hopefully we'll turn out something good. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is square our rebar up to about the diameter that we need it and the length that we need it. So we're just going to draw it down into a square. Uh, simple process. We're just going to hit it on two sides and keep rotating the bar to keep everything even. So we'll let it heat up, give it a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back. Okay, as I said, we're just going to draw it out. Square it up along the way. get that heat but you'll get the idea we're just drawing down squaring it up okay second heat still drawing I need good tones. Okay, I think that'll about do it for our second bar. Uh, we're ready to cut these off at length and move on to the next step. Okay, we're gonna try to make our cut. Get our mark. Step. You don't want to go all the way through unless you're going to shoot it all the way across the shop. It's probably best to go as far as you can. Pair of needle nose to 
possible. And try to get yourself just to bend that off. Uh, if you were to get that last strike, it's going to fly across, and obviously you don't want red hot metal flying across your shop, especially when you got a lot of combustibles. So, good thing to keep in mind. Okay, let's try to get our last cut. Like so, okay. So, so now we got two bars roughly the same size and diameter. We'll just uh, square them up a little bit, make them look exactly the same or as best we can, and then we're ready to move on. Okay, so now that we got our bars the same length, next thing I'm going to do is flatten out a section. Uh, I'm going to call it a tab, a screw tab, where I'm going to drift a hole through it, and this is where it's going to mount. This is where the bar is going to mount to the forge itself. Okay, flatten out my tab. Okay, second bar, same thing. It's thin. Okay, ready to drift our hole for our screw mount. Since I wasn't recording on the first attempt, that's okay because we got a, another one. I'll show you this one. I'm start on the anvil, I'm going to move it over to the Pritchell hole, get it lined up. All we need to do is penetrate. Whoa, there we go. Bang on the anvil and flatten it out. Sorry, I thought I was recording, but basically that's what we got. So now we're ready to move to the next step. We're going to have to make a decision of where we're going to make the bend. And we're going to have to go exactly four inches according to my measurements. And that's perfect because the width of this anvil is exactly four inches. So we're just going to bend it to this length, straight in an L. Uh, and that's going to be able to give us a hard corner to be able to hold our stone. So we're going to go ahead and heat it up. We'll do that now. Okay, so like I said, we need to go to the width of the anvil, which we're going to mark it right there. And that's where we're going to put our bend. Everything straight along the way, nice tight bend. We want that 90 degree angle. about right there. Keep it nice and tight. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Man, I really need a good, good pair of tongs. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I like that. Now, time to do the next one. Okay, second bar. Same exact thing. We're going to mark four. That's where we're going to put our bend. Just like the other one.
second one. Let's see if they match. Okay, so we got both mount bars about where we want it. Uh, that's where it's going to mount to the stand. And the stone's going to be about right here. So I think right at about the top of the stone is probably where I'm going to want to put a twist. Uh, so I'm going to try to twist the bar. And then we'll taper it off at the top at a point. And hopefully we'll be able to hook it. Or at least that's my plan. So we'll see what we can do with this twist. Okay, we're going to go for our twist. Sorry, I'm in your way. Full turn. I know you didn't see that. That's how a twist turned out. Pretty happy with that. I think we might even get brave and towards the top up here, do another twist on each pole. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, we're gonna put that top bend in on full turn.
Okay, so we cleaned up the first mount. The one on the left is the one we wire wheeled and drastic difference as you can tell. I'll give you a good zoom so you can see. Uh, like I said, the one on the right has not been cleaned yet and you can see the difference. Polishes it up a little bit and also makes it smoother to the touch. Uh, gets the burrs and edges off of it and just makes it look better. So, give you an idea of what we're doing. We're going to go ahead and clean the other one up and then we'll be ready to mount these bad boys. Okay, so we're ready to mount the brackets. We'll go ahead and do that now. Put the first one in. And I decided to go offset, or excuse me, opposite rather, with my scrolls at the top. So in other words, they're going to be facing opposite directions. I think they're just going to look better that way. And we'll show you that when we get them mounted on, what I mean. But jump over here. Get the second bracket on now. Okay, and that's essentially going to be it. They're not tough, but we can be able to back you up and show you what they look like. Okay, so there we have it, folks. All mounted up, looking pretty. Well, I think looking pretty anyway. I'm satisfied with it. Uh, as you can tell, I went with the offset, or well, excuse me, the opposite scrolls here. It gives it more of a, I don't know, a barbaric or medieval type of look to it. I think it looked better than facing them the same way, but looks don't really matter, does it? So if, they're, if it's not functional, it doesn't really matter. So we'll test it out real quick to see if it does what we need it to do. Stone fits in there perfectly. Another one on top of that. And that'll probably be good enough to close the forge off, but we got room for another one. And it's functional, so that's what I was looking for. Not so much aesthetics or beauty. Uh, that'll come in time with practice. For right now, I just needed something functional to get rid of that stupid end table. Um, it was just a hassle to deal with. So now, it's all one piece. I can just break my forge stand out to where I need it and be able to mount my Firestone uh, in an easy fashion. Okay, so I gotta say, pretty happy with the outcome. Uh, much room for improvement, of course, but that's what the learning process is all about. Getting better at the craft. And we got a functional fire brick holder. Okay, so that's going to complete this project. I'm very pleased with the outcome. And I'd love to know what you guys think. If you want to give me a comment below, a thumbs up, or even subscribe for future projects. And we'll be back with you as soon as we can.